addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the position of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well, then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. Our first comment comes from user NU3 blah, blah, blah. And they say, for ye are with the knowing of the use of the syntax of the quantum communication of the quantum language, period. That's a, in some interpretations, could be considered a very poetic, artistic comment. But in reality, I cognize the sentiment behind the comment. I mean, I have to feel that it is meant in a positive light, but it really makes absolutely no sense on its face value because it's nowhere near quantum grammar and it mixes in archaic plain English in there, which makes it could make it doubly confusing. So again, you know, from time to time, I do have to ask the viewers to please use the most clear, concise, plain, simple English that you can to communicate or articulate what it is you're trying to say if you don't know correct sentence structure. If you don't know correct sentence structure, just use plain, simple English to the best of your knowledge. Convoluting it and, you know, trying to make it artistic or fancy or whatever, or even trying to use your best interpretation of what you think quantum grammar would look like, it just ends up in confusion normally. Not only for me, but usually for the viewer as well, who probably doesn't know quantum grammar anyways. A couple things too also. I mean, certainly there could be a thing called quantum language, but there is no correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax language. It's grammar, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing syntax, grammar. English is a language. French is a language. Spanish is a language. Those languages can be used in conjunction with the grammar, but they are definitely two different things. But thank you for the sentiment, user, whomever you are. Next one comes from Dennis Thompson, and they say, Thank you, Jason. Great information about how the folk have given their claims of authority away. And correct sentence structure growth by the real time stop and correct and closure work done after David passing by a number of great fact loving folk. Hold on. And correct sentence structure growth by the real time stop and correct and closure work done after David passing by a number of great fact loving folk. Punctuation is wild. My sensation, David, would be honored over it. Yeah, hopefully he would, Dennis. Hopefully he would. But of course, we would never know that. But it's nice to think that, isn't it? If it makes, it, if it makes us feel better that he would be honored by it, then that's our own perception, right? Judging by the uh, reaction of his protege and student, if you would go by that, then you might get a little different perception. Another comment from user blah, 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 and they say, psychology is a fake science. And again, I understand 
what they're saying. And this is a much better, I think, a much more cognizable plain English comment than their first one. They get right to the point with this. And psychology is a fiction system uh, construct. It's developed by the fiction system. And it's developed to diagnose certain things to, well, guess what? You know, psychologists make a lot of money, right? And what is a brand, one branch of that? It would be psychiatry, where you go in for five to ten minutes and then you get prescribed a drug, which benefits the uh, pharmaceutical industry. So it's all about business and it's all about money when you follow the science. Or I'm sorry, I mean, follow the money. But as far as science being fake, I mean, science is a theoretical construct in that you can follow the scientific method of experimenting and coming to conclusions. And then the more you're able to prove something and certify something, the more you can conclude it to be a fact. But then more knowledge comes along and then you have to stop and correct and adjust and then continue on and that's like the continuous knowledge cultivation process which sounds very familiar doesn't it sounds very familiar to something else let's see what what am i thinking of i can't think of what what that reminds me of it, it'll come to me it'll come to me next comment comes from elizabeth blah 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 and they say what's up with Miller being a Freemason. I just finished a book called 1666 by Robert Seffer. He writes about the interconnectivity between Freemasonry and the Illuminati. Well, to answer the first question, what's up with Miller being a Freemason? I'm not quite sure how to answer that, um, other than the fact that David has come out in multiple videos and proclaim that he is a 92nd degree Freemason. Nobody seems to have had a problem with it before, least of which his student and protege, Russell J. Gould, didn't have a problem with it until after David passed away. Then all of a sudden, all the problems came to light. But while David was, was living and breathing, there was no problem. So what's up? I don't know. I don't, uh, I mean, there are good and bad eggs everywhere. Doesn't matter if you're a Freemason. Doesn't matter if you're a police, if you're military, politician, um, whatever you are. I mean, there's good and bad people everywhere. It's just, the, I, what I do and, I, and my advice would be, if anyone asks for it, would be just to conclude your judgment on an individual basis. Like, rule one, rule equal. Make sure you get the whole story. If you're going to sit there and criticize and, and form a bias against someone like a group of people, an entire group of people called Freemasons, then either you better yourself be a Freemason and have firsthand knowledge in what that is, or maybe you know more than one Freemason and you get to know them and, and ask them questions and and you get a first-hand knowledge of oh, look at what it is then maybe you can get an accurate uh, position on them but just looking at it from the outside from reading books by someone you know that fellow there what you're doing is you're basically reg regurgitating or projecting they're projecting their their book is their projection of what they think about things, and then you read it, and then you take on their opinion of what's going on without having to certify it yourself. You see what I'm saying? So books are wonderful learning tools, but critical thinking is essential to maintaining rule one, rule equal, and getting the whole story. This next one comes from their blah 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 again and they say for the record by this claim with this claim it's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the void consent okay i'm just going to stop there because that's just that's worse than quantum gobbledygook 
And I think I did give Kuliana back to this individual, and I think I said something like, there's no way that you think that this has anything to do with correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. There is absolutely no way. The positional sequencing is horrible. There is no positional sequencing. Um, there's just so many things wrong. <laughs> Incorrect with this sentence. I mean, there's really nothing else to say about it other than this is just some kind of strange fiction babble quantum gobbledygook gook. So I'm not sure what they were trying to say. But thanks for leaving the comment. Another one from the same individual, and they say, anything on top of the flag captures the flag, which is not correct. Capturing would entail almost like a physical act. Uh, almost like a physical act. Capturing is coercion. Capturing is an act of war. War negates contract. Literally. So if you put... Let me see if I can make a good example here. Okay, you see this cup? Here's a cup. All right. It is what it is. You can see what it is clearly. It's got a handle. It has all the parts. It's a whole entity in and of itself. Now, I'm going to take this phone and put it on top of the cup. Has the phone captured this cup? Is this cup now uh, in the custody of the phone? Is the phone now in control of the cup? Do you see what I'm saying? Inanimate objects cannot capture inanimate objects. <laughs> no matter how much in many gy mental gymnastics you want to do. So the correct way of verbalizing that or articulating that would be that this phone has modified the cup. Now the cup is different. The cup has been modified. Something has been added to it. It's no longer its original fact of the cup. Now it's a phone and a cup together touching. So that's sort of like how a finale or a topper works on a flag or fringe or ribbons. Anything added to a flag modifies the constitution of that flag and that flag no longer stands for what it originally stood for. Just like the grammar gets modified by certain prefixes and suffixes and things like that. So that's how it works, user. The toppers do not capture flags. They modify them. Next comment comes from Quadruple A. Which thank you for your membership. And they say, I can't understand how it is possible that almost 6K subscribers, a video has more has 122 views at this moment, which only has 15 likes. It truly, truly blows my mind. Mine too, bro. Mine too. It never ceases to amaze me. I'm with you. It's a genuine logical fallacy to me that people don't view or like the videos. Now, of course, I have to take issue with that. Because logical fallacies, there are specific logical fallacies. And this is not a logical fallacy. This is just a matter of I guess taste, you know. People view something, but they don't want to, and they get something from it, but they don't want to give anything back. They don't want to click the like or anything like that. They just want to take, take, take. And I mean, that's their choice, and that's the karma that they that will come back around to them. Pretty much, is the way I look at it. What you give is what you get. One other thing, quadruple A, that I'd like to touch on that I know that you asked in the chat field of a recent video I premiered. You asked, why is it that you see sometimes when someone writes a name in a comment or wherever on YouTube that you will see, like for example, you'll see Jason hyphen Matthew and then you'll see a bracket, colon, space, glass, bracket, and then whatever else continues on. Why are there brackets being used? Brackets are used. I use brackets, which I'm the one that brought this mechanic to the public. No one else was doing this before I started doing it. If you're using a platform where you're typing in something and it does not allow you to use the bottom line, the underline, 
to underline your compound facts or your names or whatever you're doing. If it doesn't allow that, then I use the brackets because if I'm using, if I'm saying something like for the name of the Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass is with the, do you see the problem with that? Because literally when you read that, it would say for the Jason or for the name of the Jason hyphen Matthew with the glass. There's three position lodial fact phrases there. And there can't be three position lodial fact phrases there because it comes in front of the verb. So if I would underline that name for the name of the underline start, Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass underline stop is now we have two position lodial fact phrases for the name of the Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass. What is underlined is to be taken as a whole. That colon after Matthew and, and before glass does not affect the positional sequencing if it's underlined. But if you can't underline it, what do you do? Well, for ease of communication and for correctness, I will put the colon space glass in brackets. So now quite literally, it reads for the name of the Jason hyphen Matthew, colon space glass is with the blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't affect the positional sequencing. That is why I use brackets only in plat on platforms that don't have underlining or bottom lining available. Next comment comes from Terrence Herming, and they say, Roger, Roger, colon, Jason, hyphen, space, Matthew, colon, space, glass, is carrying the torch similar to the Olympic flame. After colon, Jason, colon, space, took the flame from colon, Russell, hyphen, colon, space okay i'm just not going to read that stuff because that's confusing there's a lot of dangling participle colons in there after russell j gould and david gwen miller someday jason will have to pass the flame on to the next future guru over and out okay a couple things here i appreciate the sentiment that this individual is attempting their best efforts at articulating I do have some issues. I am not a torch carrier. I do not carry torches. And I certainly do not consider David or Russell to be gurus. Most certainly don't consider myself to be a guru. I'm a teacher, a grammar tutor. And there are no flames being passed, just to be specific. I do have around a dozen students who have closure on this grammar, though. And those people will hopefully pass that knowledge on to other people. So if I carry anything, it's knowledge. If I share anything or will pass anything on, it will be knowledge. Not torches, and I'm certainly not a guru. And one last thing, Terrence Herming. I don't know if you've ever used walkie-talkies or radios, but there is no such thing as over and out. One cannot be over and out at the same time. If you're having a conversation on radio, you say, hey, copy blah, blah, blah. What's your 20? And then blah, blah, blah comes on the radio and says, oh, I'm down the street um, by the liquor store. Over? When they say over, they're passing it on to the other person in the conversation who comes back and says, Oh, time four. I was just checking out. And they're out. They're done. That means the conversation's over. You can't be over and out. Because when you say over, you're passing. It's like passing the football to another player and they continue running. You continue with the conversation. But when you say out, you're done. You see what I'm saying? You can't be over and out. Just thought you might want to know that. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Galaxy 13 user, and they say, Groups, a communist idea. That's why they never work. You are absolutely correct. And then they say, Is the singular verb in any now time space? Well, I'll address the first comment there. Political ideology has nothing to do with why groups don't work. 
in in my view. In my view, groups don't work because of egos. Because there always wants to be someone in charge, always someone jockeying for favoritism or power. Or they're using the group to some other end, other than what it was originally intended for. That's what I've found with my involvement in groups. Now, as far as the word communist, if you look at the word communist, it's very similar to the word community. Now, if you look at communism in a, in a negative light, do you look at community in a negative light? Or communion in a negative light? Communism just means a contract with community. Now, I know it's come to represent something else. Um, I guess you could say that in practical terms, in modern terms, if you go all the way to the end of the far left, the Democrats, if you go all the way to the far end of that, the extreme end of that, that's communism, politically speaking. And if you go all the way to the far end of the far right, the Republicans, then you have Nazis, Nazism. So, I mean, in a modern sense, that's what it means. But the word itself, communists, has basically gotten a bad rap, I think, because of those political ideas. Just like the swastika, which has become associated with the political party Nazis. The swastika is a pagan symbol that predates, way predates that, you know, World War II, World War I, and also predates Christianity. So the swastika is not, it, okay, again, the value of a thing is what you ascribe to it. If you choose to put a negative value to communists, then that's your choice. Next comment comes from the same individual, and they say, Jason, at 358, I think you mean 4.9. And then I say, no, I said and meant 4.8. Do you have closure on the correct sentence structure parts of speech as well as which particles of negation are past or future tense? Now, this conversation went on for quite some time after that because this individual kept saying that past tense is a nine. Even when I fully came out and said, past tense is eight, future tense is nine. Even after I said, do you have conclusion on the correct sentence structure parts of speech, as well as which particles of negation are past or future tense? Even after I gave those closures, this individual kept saying, well, past tense is 0.9. Right here are the parts of speech as I have known them, since I first saw them in 2017, as taught by Colin David Ivan Wynn, Colin Miller, Colin Russell Ivan J. Colin Gould, and anyone else out there, myself included. And as you can plainly see, 8 is past tense, 9 is future tense. It's the way it's been. So I'm not sure why this individual... Uh, why they why why they don't grasp that? Because it really seems like they are trying to learn. Although they haven't taken workshops, they said, "Oh, Jason, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a workshop. I'm gonna apply for a workshop." But they haven't, which is usually what happens when most people say, "Yeah, I'm gonna get a hold of you and do a workshop. I'll get a hold of you next week." They never do. This individual, to their credit, does seem like they want to learn. Next comment comes from Day. Wait a minute. Day, okay, I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry. The comment says, how can I study with you and join your class? Now, at first, folks, I thought this was a joke because it's a recent comment and I haven't gotten one of these in a very, very, very long time. So I almost responded, are you trolling me or is this a joke? And I almost also said, did you watch the video in its entirety? But I already know the answers to these questions, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to come off as condescending or anything like that, especially if this person is genuinely interested. The small chance that they're not a troll. 
I gave them my email address and told them they can contact me and apply for a workshop. Please include your correct name, though. With someone who asked me a question like this, this tells me that they have not watched a video, not one video in its entirety on my channel. And I'm not talking about the shorts. I'm talking about the long form videos. Because in just about every single long form video, I answer this question in every single video. I would say 97% of the videos I have on this channel, I answer that question. Not only during a video, but at the very end of a video, I tell you how you can learn this and how you can study with me and how you can apply for a workshop. Every video has my email address plastered across the bottom of the screen. That's why it just blows my mind when someone will ask a question like that. It's like, if they have to ask a question like this, in my mind, I'm thinking, do they really possess the neurological pathways at this juncture into now space to learn correct sentence structure? If they don't know the answer to this question, when I actually literally provide it in almost every video or in the description of each video, I'm not trying to judge people though. With the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, the maintenance of the rule one rule equal, the coolion I gave back was you may apply, apply for a workshop at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Please include your full correct name. Thank you. Next comment comes from Jake B. And they say, let's see here. The ticket was $25 and most tickets are around $100 to $200. Instead of taking it to court, the officer gave this young man a warning. This isn't a right to travel victory. And he even says, okay, well, we're going to have to agree to disagree. They simply gave him a warning so as not to negatively impact his driving record. It means you got an exceptionally generous offer, officer. Now, that, Jake, that is indeed one perception of that. You and I don't know that that's what happened there. We can guess that's what happened. One, one thing that happened, perhaps. Personally, I don't think that's the whole story. Personally, I agree with you that, that the young kid did get a very generous officer, a very friendly officer, a very kind officer, a very patient officer. I definitely agree with all of those things. But to say that, that the officer didn't want to negatively impact the young man's driving record, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't. It could also be true that the officer didn't want to deal with paperwork. He just wanted to be done with it because he could see the kid was harmless. Right? So it's, that's also possible as well that, that maybe it was the end of the guy's shift. And he didn't want to have to deal with this sovereign, this soft sit bullshit. <laughs> so, but I do, I do agree with what you're saying, some of what you're saying. But as far as saying that... Um, it isn't a right to travel victory. That's your perception, Jake. What someone else perceives as a victory is not for you and I to uh, to say. Because I don't, I personally don't make claims for other people. That kid definitely thinks it's a victory because he came out of it unscathed. So, yeah, it is a victory. That's like saying, um, like like in the in the most recent MMA fight that I just watched was uh, a middleweight title fight between Sean Strickland and I can't pronounce the guy's name. I think his name is Duplicio or Duplissi or something like that. It was a very close fight. It went five rounds. I think... As a martial artist myself, as someone who's trained in all different disciplines, my main one being boxing, since I was 18 years old, I think Sean Strickland won based upon the number of punches that he landed and also based upon the way their faces looked after the fight. The judges thought differently. The judges gave the majority, I'm sorry, the split decision to the other guy, to Duplessis. So that's like saying that Duplessis didn't get a victory. Just because I think he didn't get a victory. But the judges thought that he got a victory. You see what I'm saying? It's it's very subjective. So what's 
a victory for one man may be a defeat for another. I just wanted to point that out. I don't know if that analogy made sense, but at least I got to put mixed martial arts into what I'm saying here. So then they say, I was a bit confused as there were things like right travel. Why is the four added? Okay, so I'm going to show you. Oh, I don't have my response in here. I did. I think I did respond to this. I did give Kuliana, but I'll, I'll just do it. I'll give a different type of Kuliana here. Jake, you left out the T-O in between right and travel. Because as it stands, if you put right and travel next to one another without the quotations, it wouldn't be a 4-4. Four, four, it would be a 3-4. It would be an adjective pronoun. But you left out the two. The right to travel is a 4-1-2. It's a pronoun adverb verb. Dangling participle verb. Right is a pronoun followed by the adverb in the future tense to a 1.9. And then travel, which would be a verb, which is a two, and it's a dangling participle verb. And you can look behind me for the parts of speech that I use in correct sentence structure. You can see up there clearly that one is an adverb, uh, two is a verb, and four is a pronoun. And nine is future tense, Galaxy 13 user. So that's where, where that comes from. All right? And I think I said something about, you know, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop to get more closure, or you can study the videos on my YouTube channel. So then they say, it kind of looks like one of those ads you would see online where the computer uses numbers and letters to make a stylized message. I don't know. I don't know what that means or what they're talking about. Also, sorry I didn't respond to your other message. It got lost in a sea of other responses I had. I forgive you. And this right here, uh, I didn't publish because of the content of it, because it violates the terms and conditions of the comments field, which I'm sure Jake did not read. It's a common theme, especially coming from individuals from this sector of the communities, like common law people, uh, legalese people. They just, for some reason... Even though they preach common law. Now, I'm not saying that Jake is a common law individual or not. I don't know that for sure. But in common law, you're supposed to know the law of the land that you're walking in. You're supposed to know the law that is common to everyone around you as you're traveling. But yet they come here on this channel and don't pay attention to the community guidelines. Go figure. Do as I say, not as I do. So Moore's divine constitution. Adjective, adjective, pronoun. Act four. So we're talking about acting here. We're not actually talking about performing. It's acting. All members must preserve these holy and divine laws and all members must obey laws of the government because by being a Moorish American, you are part and partial of the government and must live the life accordingly. Act four. This organization of the Moorish Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. So traffic laws count as laws you need to follow as a Moorish American. Okay, so this individual, Jake, is definitely not a common law, definitely not a Moor, definitely a proponent of the fiction system, and they definitely agree with those laws, which is their prerogative, if they want to. Um, that's fine. But this right here has absolutely zero to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Whether it's traffic laws or whether it's a Moorish science temple or Moorish American. Because what is an American, folks? What is a Moor? Well, Dean Martin can tell you what a Mora is. He'll say, that's a Moore. Okay, I had to put that in there. But um, if you're an American, are you a North American? A Canadian can be an American, correct? North American, South American, Central American. A Brazilian can be an American, correct? Am I right? An Ecuadorian can be an American. A Guatemalan can be an American. 
A Texan can be an American. A Mexican can be an American. Hell, even an African can be an American. Damn it. I mean, think about it, folks. I've just given you an example of the ridiculousness of the plain English language. And hopefully this Jake individual will contact me and I can have a conversation with them. Because they did ask me, can I contact you? But not with the volition of applying for a workshop. And I gave my consent. Because contract is by consent. So I hope Jake does contact me. Because I do like from time to time to have conversations with individuals like himself. Because he does seem to be genuinely interested. And he observes etiquette and is polite. Which... Much honor and respect for him for displaying that. It's a very uncommon trait on the internet. Next comment comes from Property Geek. Thank you for your membership, Property Geek. And he's commenting on a question on a on a thing I was reading that was written, I guess, by Anna von Reitz, where Anna says something about uh, human contracts. And I said, why would she use human, the name human being contracts? Why wouldn't she just say contract? And he says, because human means less than a man, bringing him down to the same level as an AI. Now, I'm curious as to where Property Geek gets this from. Like, what is the closure on what his meaning of human is? Now, I know in certain dictionaries from the early, I think, 1900s do give closure to the word human as being a monster or something like that but that's not the earliest nativity root meaning of what human is so i'm curious as to what is the authority of proper property geeks meaning of the word human because obviously it's not the same one that i have looking it up in an etymology dictionary it comes from mid 15th century uh of or belonging to man of man, human, humane, philan philanthropic, kind, gentle, polite, civilized. This is in part from the Proto-Indo-European Goldman, which literally means earthling, earthly being, as opposed to the gods, from this root, earth. So this goes back to my parse of the word world, which can come back to the word man. See, right here, ground. I mean, we're going from Hebrew, Hebrew, Adam. Now, how many syllables are in human? Hugh, men. So let's just take this a little bit further. How about hue? What is hue? It's color, form, appearance. But let, let's just go with color so <laughs> we don't uh, get into any political discussions here. Skin, complexion, hue. Complexion, color, let's call it that. So when you put hue with man, what do you have? A man of complexion, a man of color. It doesn't say what color. Well, I mean, it does down here. All right, if you go with the Lithuanian. But we're not, we're not doing that. Let's, let's get that out of our minds, folks. Hue plus man basically means a man of color, whether that color is pink, brown, black, white, yellow, what a, orange. Woo woo! <laughs> it doesn't matter what, what it is, right? It's a human. And that's where my basis for my cognition of that word means when I see it. I, cert I mean, certain humans can definitely be monsters. There's no doubt about it. But I don't think of a human as being less than a man. It's just a man of color. And that brings me on to this whole month we're in right now, February of 2024, that is known as Black History Month. Folks, and y you can please, please look up my video on racism. I'll try to remember to include a link up in the corner there. When, if you look up, and I'm not saying, again, this is not the authority of what I use for my meaning of these words, but if you look up in a legal dictionary, Black's Law Dictionary, what racism is, 
the legal system looks at racism as when one race is given favoritism or priority over another. That is literally what racism is, legally speaking. When one race is giving priority or favoritism over another, to paraphrase. So when you say Black History Month, you're now giving black history priority over white history, over brown history, over yellow history, over orange history, over pink history, over beige history, over maroon history. Okay, do you see what I'm saying here? That's racism. And it's subtly being perpetrated right in front of your face, whether you realize it or not. When you participate with things like Black History Month or Black Lives Matter, look at look at the, the animosity that occurs if someone would say White History Month. If someone would start promoting that like on a social media, White History Month, how do you think people would react to that? Do you think that they would call that person a racist? Probably. But if you, would you call someone a racist that's promoting Black History Month? Probably not. What about Red History Month? How about that? Why don't we have that? You see the ridiculousness and almost, you know, just for me, humorous use of the English language. How a little word, a little coloring, you put the adjective of red in front of history, adjective pronoun history, now you've colored perception, and now you've created a trigger in certain people's minds. Anyways, to get back to this, uh, this individual says, if human is subject to AI and AI contracts as an equal, it is better to be a man with a higher authority over it. Well, for me, property geek, AI is a non-issue. For me, AI is... Just another tactic used by the fiction system to create fear in the minds and hearts of society. I have done experiments with chatbot, whatever you want to call it, and different AI applications. And I can tell you with 100% certainty that AI does not possess the capacity to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It lacks the capacity to do that, which tells me that AI is not really artificial intelligence. It's not like intelligence, intellect. It's, it's not a complete formatory apparatus. It's built on repetition and it's, and it's created by rote. But it cannot, to put it in another way, it cannot think creatively. Let's put it that way. At least not from my own experience. This final series of comments comes from someone named Haggai. Blah, blah, blah. And I, I don't really understand what this person's doing here. I really don't. Um, this was on a Romley. This was, uh, they commented on a Romley Stewart video that I did. And uh, again, someone else who hasn't read the terms and conditions of this comment field or the, or, or the community guidelines. But we got a little bit of entertainment value out of it. They decided to write in the dead language of Latin. Capitus. Capitus Divinitio Maxima. Whatever. So what I did was syntax what they had there. And then they said, Certain omnes sed non omnibus palman. And then I syntax that as well. Because it's all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, nonsense. It doesn't matter whether it's in uppercase or lowercase, whatever the case, it's all gobbledygook babble. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the loyalist contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content, 
exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions. And we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.